In our example of the 100 accounts, the population has its mean return, mu, and the standard deviation of return, sigma. When we sample from the population, we attempt to estimate the true population mean and standard deviation. We do this by calculating the sample mean, x bar, and standard deviation, s. These sample statistics are likely to be different from the population parameters. We refer to the difference between the sample statistic and population parameter as the sampling error. Now if we take another random sample from the population, chances are we'll get a different sample mean and standard deviation. Repeat this process many times until all possible combinations are exhausted and we find that the sample statistic itself is a random variable. It has a probability distribution and we call this the sampling distribution. This brings us to the central limit theorem. This theorem states that for simple random samples of size n from a population with mean mu and variance sigma square, the sampling distribution of the sample mean approaches a normal distribution with mean mu and variance sigma square over n. Take special note of this term. As we increase n, the variance of the sampling distribution gets smaller. What this simply means is, as we increase the sample size n, the narrower this sampling distribution gets. This makes sense as we know that we generally feel more confident about our sample statistics when we increase the sample size. The central limit theorem is extremely useful because the normal distribution is easy to apply to hypothesis testing and confidence intervals, which we'll learn later. The beauty of it is that the population distribution does not have to be normal. As long as the sample size is at least 30, the sampling distribution approximates to a normal distribution. Let's learn how the central limit theorem can be applied. The average daily return of a stock is 0.18% and the standard deviation of returns is 0.95%. An analyst who does not know these parameters picked a sample of 30 random observations to analyse. What is the mean and standard deviation of the sample distribution? Pause the video now and work out your answer using the central limit theorem. And we're back. This example is a straightforward application of the central limit theorem. The mean of the sample mean is simply the population mean, which is 0.18%. The standard deviation of the sample mean is the standard deviation of the population, divided by the square root of n. Dividing 0.95 by the root of 30, we get an answer of 0.17%. Let's try another problem. The analyst picked another stock and collated 100 random samples of its daily returns. He found that the sample mean is 0.23%, and the sample standard deviation is 1.19%. Calculate and interpret the mean and standard deviation of the sample distribution. This problem is, more often than not, the case when dealing with samples. The population mean and standard deviations are unknown, and we try to make estimations from the sample statistics. Therefore, in this case, the mean of the sample distribution is 0.23% and the standard deviation is 0.12%. This implies that if we took all possible combinations of samples of size 100 from the population, the mean of the sample returns would be 0.23%, and the standard deviation of the sample returns will be 0.12%. To summarise the central limit theorem, remember these three rules. The sampling distribution will be approximately normal when the sample size is at least 30. The mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the mean of the population. And the variance of the sampling distribution is equal to the variance of the population variance divided by the sample size. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.